my dear Aries, this is your love and spirituality reading for the month of April 2019 with me, Queen of Cups Tarot. We are soon entering into your season, Aries, so happy birthday to you. Um, I wish you a really beautiful birthday, okay? So I read for the signs in order of most liked videos, and if you do hit that thumbs up button, you are truly helping my channel to flourish here on YouTube with giving it more attention. So you can see the order I read in this time around at the community section of my channel, and thank you all for liking, watching, commenting, donating, and subscribing to my channel. I am so grateful for all of your appreciation. This is a general reading for sun, moon and rising sign. The reading can go both ways. The drama is the same, but it can be different castings to the different roles by the universe. And for this reading, I used the Crystal Tarot by Elisabetta Trevisan. And I will start shuffling your cards. So when I open your deck here, I see nine of wands together with the stars. So it seems like you are... Uh, in a very strong mood, uh, nine of wands, it's uh, like you're taking up uh, oil from underneath the ground and using for fuel. So it's very, I feel it's very, it's like mustardy, it's very, um, uh, it's a particular kind of energy that feels like you won't take any crap at all and uh, that you are really in this um, mood of going, like going, 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 going. And here we have the star card uh, as well, showing that you are divinely guided. So I think they are very happy with your strength here. Okay, so I call the divine with love and light. And here we have also the eight of wands together with nine of wands. So shit, you're really on fire Aries <laughs> so eight of wands is kind of Uranus energy hitting you or the sun's rays now when it's springtime uh, and it can knock you out of your socks but uh, I think you're kind of prepared for this energy with the nine of wands you're standing there as uh, strong and and just letting this energy shower all over you uh, building you up even more so it's um, it's an amazing energy and um, uh, I think you can accomplish almost anything with this kind of uh, this energy. Okay, so uh, I call uh, the four archangels in the four corners of the world. And yes, okay, the strength card number eight together with eight of wands, which is connected to the strength card. Uh, and this is Leo and this is Sagittarius and you are Aries. So you have kind of access to all the fire you might feel um, even if you are strong you can take this you might feel a little bit exhausted uh, probably uh, you are supposed to download this very strong energy and uh, um, it would be a good thing if you rested as much as possible where in nature as much as possible maybe close to water so you don't self combust here Okay, <laughs> so I'm just kidding, of course, but it's a lot of fire. So I call the six elements and here we have a five of swords with the strength card. So I'm thinking you are going to need this strength, ace of swords. I felt it was kind of itching in my hand there. So um, um, tell the truth, only the truth, nothing else but the truth. <laughs> so help you God, because... It seems like it's going to be very important with some uh, some truth being told here. And it's not that you have lied before. It's like someone needs to hear what you have to say. And uh, it might be you thinking that they need to hear what you have to say and being very grumpy because they don't listen. But uh, it can be a little bit different. But anyway, um, there's something here that needs to be communicated uh, before it becomes like a big problem. Uh, so um, communicate with certainty, but also with some kind of grace to, uh, to not um, uh, intimidate other people or overwhelm them. Because if you have this strong energy, you can come out on as a little bit pushy maybe. But six elements, earth, wind, fire, water, spirit and ether to join us here today and to give us a clear view reading for my dear Aries 
viewers. So I want my dear Aries to have love in their lives and to find themselves in loving relationships. I also want you to have creative success and to be able to walk on your highest path towards your highest destiny. Oh, <laughs> so uh, my, okay, we have a Knight of Cups here uh, with a page uh, of cups. So this, um, you have a lot of energy to your disposal, so you will be able to do something courageous which might be an act of love, um, an uh, act of vulnerability, or it might be that uh, a person will do an act of love or an act of vulnerability towards you. It might be a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, or any sign, just someone that has um, maybe recently opened their heart or has like a, uh, a new interest for you. It doesn't have to be so new, this night of Calices is a little bit older, but um, it's probably things that haven't been fully expressed before. Uh, so it might be you wants to say something with truth, express something that's kind of very sweet, but it, it requires us to be very courageous and vulnerable, to dare to be vulnerable. Uh, or it might be someone wants to, uh, wants to express something to you. You might get some opportunity to do something that you have always dreamt of. So start uh, dreaming because um, uh, what you dream might come true. Uh, and I'm thinking it might have something also to do with, uh, with work or with uh, um, like your dream, uh, why you are here, your, um, the reason to why you are here. Because we saw the Nine of Wands and the Star card in the beginning showing that you have a lot of energy to your disposal to fulfill some kind of divine mission and you're also divinely guided. Uh, so it, it might come new opportunities when it comes to work or you, maybe you are uh, creating them yourself with this very strong energy. Okay, so I'll just tune in to you Aries and uh, the energy for April for a few seconds here. So, my dear Aries, this is your future there, and this is your now, and this is your past. And in the past, we have a King of Cups. Uh, so, King of Cups it might be a, a bigger offer that you have had uh, come to you before. Um, maybe you are um, in the warm embrace of a job that really takes good care of you, or a person that wants uh, that takes really good care of you this could be a, um, a husband it can be a wife of course as well uh, and it can be a, a place where we are really feel uh, taken care of and as one in the group uh, with the king of uh, cups here i think um, uh, it might be someone that uh, are in love with you but what i see here it might be on a fur um, Knave of Swords, uh, Seven of Cups, someone might be scared maybe of approaching you. Uh, maybe you have intimidating them, intimidating them in, ah, in some way, okay. So, and this is in your now. So the, the King of Cups is also about healing. Uh, if you have been uh, feeling ill lately, uh, the King of Cups... Um, uh, it kind of the body signals very very strongly when we need to do acts of healing. So, for example, if you uh, if you have a severe headaches or um, muscle pains or joint pains or whatever uh, kind of physical experience, it's just pointing to something that needs your attention so it can become healed. I'm thinking you have a very great opportunity here for healing. Uh, and it's like you're healing from your soul. So if you let yourself become more you uh, and um, be more authentically you, take down your God, um, stand there in your full uh, power, in your full truth, in your full kind of disclosure. Uh, and I'm thinking something will happen. You will go through some kind of healing process. Uh, so the body is very smart like this. Even if you feel like you're going to die, it's actually doing the right thing so you can 
become healed, but it needs you and your attention. So you put attention to where uh, it hurts to bring in the light uh, through this wound. And here we have a nine of cups. Uh, so this is the the thing that you have always been dreaming of, uh, it's it wants to come to you here. Um, it might be a, a, a relationship, it might be um, a state of being, uh, find, finding inner peace and happiness. Um, with the Nine of Cups, it might also be a more uh, calm um, kind of lifestyle, okay, a situation where we um, sit on the beach and drink pina coladas and we don't uh, we don't uh, um, work ourselves to the grave we're actually enjoying life more instead of um, rushing through life and being well organized and doing a lot of things we kind of become uh, more a person that are able to enjoy our time on earth uh, but and it might be that you're very connected with someone that your chosen one, the nine of cups can show that you have a very special connection uh, with a person that's not going to go away. OK, so uh, this is your past here and we have uh, the nine of wands. So that's the uh, the beginning sequence <laughs> nine of wands. I think you have been forced to be very, very strong. Uh, but here you are kind of start to enjoy your strength, I think. Before, maybe you were scared of it. Maybe it was you that was intimidated with your own strength. And now uh, you're more okay with it. You're, you're healed. It's like no one can touch a person of Tao, a person that's healed. Because if you love all the parts of you, um, a, a person coming and criticize, cri giving you criticism, for example, it won't really stick. It will be like, okay, thank you for the feedback. Uh, you will not feel upset with this. Uh, so um, there's something going on here with your self-esteem. We have nine of wands, nine of cups. So it's the hermit energy. You are kind of getting to know yourself better and uh, really starting this healing journey. Uh, here we have a five of pentacles though. So the things that you have been through in the past might have given you an inkling of that you don't deserve all the things that you want. Um, maybe you feel that life is somehow sabotaging you or that things goes wrong or uh, that you don't have uh, the economy you want, you don't have the love relationships you want, you don't have the stuff you want, <laughs> things like this. Um, but I'm thinking this is things of the past, but you make it to be about your tomorrow because you have been through a lot. It made you very strong and it's probably also made you a little bit suspicious about things in general. So you don't have really open arms towards life. You stand here very strong, but you don't uh, expect that um, love and luck and big fortune will come to you. Um, it's it's some uh, it's some element of luck here. You might in early ages have learned that things doesn't come for free, or uh, you need to work really hard to stay alive, or it's something like this, uh, where you have this presumption which is limiting you today a little bit. Yes, and here we have the devil. Uh, so I think there's still bits and parts of you that you don't really love and this needs to be focused on now. I'm seeing you have healed a lot and I think you have accepted uh, your fiery temperament a little bit more but there's other things with you that you seem to have a hard time accepting and it might come out um, mirrored in other people, uh, co-workers, partners, uh, uh, friends and family. So they might act like the devil, but it's just to show you something uh, about yourself. Sometimes a person can act very cruel towards you to show you that you don't dare to defend yourself or pick you up from the gutter. Uh, or uh, a person might um, betray all your loyalties to show that you give loyalty to the wrong kind of people. It's something like this that's going on here. And, um, hmm... Um, the devil. It's Capricorn. 
uh, Capricorn energy and here you have also the Hermit that's Virgo energy so it's very earthy I'm thinking it's mostly about uh, your self-discovery you are going deeper and deeper inside yourself but I'm thinking you are scared to do so because you think you will find the devil down there I'm thinking you are the worst uh, <laughs> the worst uh, uh, hmm. The person that criticizes you the most is you, okay, if I put it that way. Um, and now uh, you are kind of curious, wants to go and check, okay, who am I really? And you are a little bit intimidated that maybe you are, uh, you know, awful, but uh, you are not, okay? Uh, accept everything you find with yourself. If you can accept and and um, have this loving embrace towards yourself, uh, forgive yourself. If you feel guilty for something and feel, oh, I did this really stupid thing, uh, also embrace that. Say, okay, so uh, with the best of my knowledge I had at that time, I did this stupid thing. And if it were today, I wish I would have done something differently. But this is also how I learn. So you can have a little bit more forgiving attitude maybe towards yourself when you are going on this self-discovering uh, journey. Um, there might also be characters of course Capricorn and Virgo on the outside that kind of mirroring different process within this. So be very mindful, specifically if it's people that's annoying you. Uh, they probably are pointing to something that you don't wish to see about yourself but if you did with loving eyes you would heal so healing is a very important thing here to learn to love and accept all of you and here we have the empress which is taurus so now you have uh, capricorn virgo taurus that's all uh, earth signs so it seems like you're working very much with accepting accepting your body uh, accepting your personality uh, accepting the life you have, uh, building a great foundation for yourself. Capricorn is very hardworking. Um, <laughs> Taurus is very is a very beautiful creator of beautiful things. Uh, Virgo is uh, kind of um, uh, very organized and also um, a seeker, like a scientist seeker. Uh, so um, I'm thinking you're working with all these different aspects joined together uh, to really heal yourself from the bottom up. So by getting to know yourself uh, and forgive yourself, you also heal yourself in a very beautiful way. Uh, this is abundance also. Uh, so it's very, it's very luscious and abundance. You can have whatever you want with these kind of cards here. It's just that... You don't think you deserve it. So that's the only thing that's holding you from the things that you want the most. This that you don't think that you deserve it. You, it's no use to dream about big things if you uh, not won't ever have it. So it's like you don't want to cause yourself to be anxious. You, you don't dream at all um, of these important things that you have kind of hidden also for yourself. But I'm thinking you're figuring it out now. And here, if you can come to this point of self-love, this is like Earth, all its natural resources. Um, and this is you having all these abundant resources, talents, uh, uh, personality traits, uh, gifts, uh, wisdom, uh, which you can share with the world. So you're more valuable than you uh, ever imagined. Um, so you're valuable... You're valuable here on earth, but you're wasting a lot of time uh, judging yourself and thinking less of you. Uh, so this is in the now. And here we have the Queen of Wands coming underneath Nine of Wands. So uh, lucky <laughs> for Aries, you are very strong. So even if you think that you are worthless and not worth loving and not worth having this, and uh, you still uh, stand tall, okay, because you have some kind of inner... Uh, self-respect I think you enjoy your uh, your strength uh, you enjoy it you know that this is at least something you do well so you lean towards this your personality trait being very um, the queen of wands is very experienced she has lived uh, many many lifetimes she has also a certain amount of self-respect uh, she she knows uh, her capacity but it might be that you're leaning towards 
capacity. You're always showing a lot of capacity. But uh, what about you being valuable, just being you, which is displayed here, just being you, just breathing. Maybe you don't have to, you know, run around, do a lot of things to be of value. Just saying, maybe just being able to hold the grid or just existing. Uh, maybe that could be enough uh, for you being valuable. I don't say you have to become lazy and not do things, but uh, I think you're putting too much value into being a performance artist, <laughs> performing a lot of things in your life here with your amazing strength. Uh, yeah, and here comes death. Uh, so what would you do if this strength would be taken away from you? Uh, how would you survive then if you were not able to perform, uh, if you were not able to uh, fix everything, fix every problem, uh, do everything? If you were, um, imagine you were lying in bed, incapacitated, you can't get out of bed. Uh, would that do something towards your self-esteem? Uh, so I'm thinking you need to find deeper values inside of yourself. We are all... Uh, going in this, uh, we are being children, we uh, grow, we develop, we, became, we become uh, stronger, smarter, our brain develops, uh, we are on our peak and then we will descend. So this descension is something that can make a person like this, what I see in front of me, quite depressed. Because if I don't have the capacity anymore uh, to do important things, maybe then I'm not important at all. Uh, and you are important just by being alive. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So find your uh, inner undisturbed you. Uh, find the vast uh, energy that's you and connect with this because it's your kind of a, your eternal flame that will survive whatever happens. And uh, if you can connect with that, I think you will find a total new way of respecting yourself without being this highly, like, it's like you're performing or you are, like, producing. I don't know. It's like you're, I'm seeing, like, a, a, a squirrel <laughs> running around collecting things and uh, being very useful. But remember that squirrels also have a lot of fun. They are being very useful, yes, but they have a lot of fun swinging through the trees, doing small acrobatic things and, uh, you know, being happy. Maybe you need to bring more into uh, of that element too. Uh, so I'm going to put a video to you. I did it to some of the other sign. I don't remember which. Uh, but it's with Moji. I watched it a few days ago. Uh, and I think it can show you uh, who you really are uh, underneath the performance act uh, so it, the beginning of the video is amazing you can watch you can listen to the whole thing if you want but the beginning is the important part like the first 30 minutes or hour it's four hours long i think <laughs> so uh, some juicy stuff there and here we have the star so it's like the, the divine is leading you to your kind of your decay if i can say so it's like a little bit things are not going swell here with the death card things are being taken away from you that you have been taken for granted before so it's like being an elite athletic and not no longer being able to perform your sport that kind of thing is what i'm seeing and uh, it's not you are not punished it's so you will stay and face yourself it's so you will stay and find yourself it's so you will stay and find your amazing soul and start loving yourself without the achievement okay so that's what's going on it's healing going on it doesn't feel like that it feels maybe like illness but it's healing okay and here we have a five of wands <laughs> so this is going to be awkward for you because you're going to have still this energy uh, which you want to do a lot of things like solving a lot of problems fixing a lot of issues and I'm thinking you're a little bit addicted to this uh, it might be an addiction uh, to uh, get a high, like a rush, an adrenaline rush, uh, running around feeling useful, worth loving, 
uh, gives you an adrenaline rush. So you don't want to be without your fix, so to speak. So the five of wands is what I'm feeling an inner conflict. Might be, of course, outer conflict as well, but mainly I'm feeling it's an inner conflict uh, where you have this part of you that wants the fix, the chemical rush, the reward for being this achiever. And if you don't get it, uh, this starts to rumble inside of you. Okay, and that anxiety that you have tried to avoid might come to surface. Yes, it comes to surface and it's a great thing. Okay, three of pentacles comes underneath the empress. So now we're talking. So when this anxiety rise to surface, that is, it's, it's an important treasure. Okay, so stay with anxiety. It's pointing you to something uh, that's going to be very rewarding for you. Uh, so if you are able to stay with your anxiety and nurture it, being like um, um, the medic staff on an ambulance, taking care of your uh, anxiety here, panic, whatever it can be, um, it will be very fruitful. This is how you start to give yourself love, uh, by giving your most vulnerable parts of you attention. And this is going to make this vulnerable parts of you grow and and get self-respect so you will get self-respect by you don't have to be an achiever anymore this is more passive energy uh, she is just sitting there just like being a flower i'm smelling so good i don't have to do anything but smell good <laughs> so this is what you're going to grow into someone that smells really good and everyone wants to stop and 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 smell your fragrance so it might be you becoming a spiritual leader of some sort and giving of your wisdom or just holding a very beautiful, happy energy. People wants to be close to you or listen to your wisdom, uh, whatever it is. So it's something you have pushed far down that wasn't allowed. Maybe you have a hard time. I think you need to uh, start to worship the goddess. Okay, put images of the goddess as your your screen at your mobile phone and maybe your laptop and put pictures of her by a statue um, the goddess is life and it's just there without any so much effort it's there it's the, the beating heart the growing plant it's there uh, so you need to tap into this uh, uh, natural energy that spills everything effortlessly kind of effortlessly so um, if you can tap into that energy and and learn about that, uh, you will create, but in a different way, uh, in a more in a more healthy way. Also, is what I'm thinking here. We have both strength card and uh, the star card. The star card is seventeen. One plus seven is eight. Uh, so it's a great connection between you and the divine right now. It's like you're almost walking on the uh, in the valley of death so you're being so close to god it doesn't mean that you're going to die it just means that you are very close to the divine realms right now it's like you can almost touch it uh, sometimes when we are like this walking underneath the eye of god we might get depressed uh, or feel sick or um, there's a lot of energy we can go crazy it's like being too close to some high frequency thing and you can't tolerate holding the energy but it's going to evolve you uh, it's going to probably uh, awake a lot of things inside of you that have laid dormant. Uh, it's like it's um, switching on different switches like this. Uh, so it's painful, uh, but evolution can be a little bit painful. It's like growing pains, uh, feeling like you want to die or <laughs> feeling like we're, life is not worth living. It can be a lot of things like this coming uh, because um, um, this energy is uh, too strong for... Um, a human being to carry so um, uh, it's opening up to many gateways at the same time so everything the tsunami wave rushes in on you uh, and do does it number with you but it's going to be a great thing uh, even though it's a little bit of a tsunami um, and it's going to be leading to this inner conflict in the end it's going to be very fertile for you okay uh, and this is your future and another uh, Taurus energy we have um, Taurus Venus here and here's uh, Taurus and this is a very masculine energy and this is the very feminine part so this is kind of the cow 
uh, the Holy Mother, uh, the milk that sustains us, the stargate that brings us to life. Uh, and here is the Hierophant. Uh, it's the energy that kind of leads us towards death and helps us uh, uh, to overcome, uh, to, to go through life and have something to lean on, like a library. But it's also like the Tib Tibetan Book of the Death or the Egyptian Book of the Death is what I'm feeling here. Um, so one thing I've learned from these books is that dreams are very important. If you learn to, li to live your life in dreams, very awakened, even being able to have lucid dreams, when you die, you will uh, have practiced on doing all the things that will happen when you die. You practice this in dreams. Uh, so I'm thinking there's something going to go on with you uh, where you now practice on living in another dimension. It's not meaning that you're going to die. It just means that you're going to ascend uh, into some new kind of energy. And, and you're kind of having this as your guide uh, to take you through this. So I'm thinking it's your inner wisdom. Um, you have a lot of wisdom. Um, both the hermit here, the empress, the queen of wands, and um, the hero font, and the star card center. And here we have a page of cups. So um, it might be a Taurus or a Scorpio person. We have Aquarius there, a Capricorn, <laughs> Virgo, Taurus again. It might be approaching you. It doesn't have to be these signs, but um, it can be, it can point to this. Um, Knave of Calluses. So when you have given up uh, totally and accepting your own fear, accepting, for example, uh, you might have a nagging fear underneath that I will be alone for my whole life. I will die alone. Um, so this might be a thing. Uh, and um, I'm just saying an example. It doesn't have to apply. It, it's just... You might have this thing, but you have been very giddy about it, like very competent about this. And yeah, it's uh, it's fine. I'm so happy without this. I don't have to have this in my life. I'm cool with it. But here uh, you kind of admit this to yourself that, OK, I would like to have this. And with this, it might come a lot of tears, but that would be you connecting with your wiser inner self and finally you know they have waved this flag for you or this road sign uh, your whole life and you never listen because you thought uh, I can never have this what I dream about and it might be true that you can't have it right now uh, but you need to acknowledge it to yourself so you can go through the whole healing process uh, because if you think you are born with this thought I can never have love um, it's probably what you need to work on in this lifetime. And if you have pushed it away, pushed it away, pushed it away, I can do without, I can do without. Uh, you haven't really done the work, so to speak. You haven't really, when we start to accept, okay, this is my fear. Uh, what's, what is it? The, all the things that this fear is holding uh, and going through it with open eyes and, and like seeing it with truth and also saying, okay, I accept that this is my belief, I accept that this is my experience, that I don't have love in my life or love doesn't come easy for me. It can be, you can replace the love with uh, career, work, money, friends, um, uh, this great house, whatever. <laughs> okay, so replace it with the thing that you think you can't have. Um, and when we accept, okay, I accept, I think I can't have it. <laughs> I accept that it seems like I'm not allowed to have it, that the divine is keeping me from it or depriving me of it. So just start to see these kind of things. It will be, uh, it, it will open doors for you. Uh, the next card is the Knave of Pentacles. And when we have these uh, cards together, it shows that you might be in a twin flame relationship and you're working this through with someone else. Possibly an earth sign or a water sign. So either of these are, are you. Uh, we have Scorpio here and here we have Capricorn, Aquarius, Earth. Here we have uh, earth, Scorpio, water. Uh, so, and, and it's a divine relationship. Uh, that is, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship. It often is, but it can be a best friend. It can be uh, not so often relatives. 
but uh, it's like people we meet on the outside that holds a, a different culture uh, than do we. They have learned different things, things from their home uh, and uh, from their previous lifetime. So it's like two um, energies that was once the same have become very different and are now supposed to merge. Um, sometimes symptoms of being twin flames can be having aches and pains on the same places and kind of being a little bit connected even if you are not on your phone <laughs> so uh, small things that can reveal this and we have a six of pentacles here so um there's some kind of studying going on we can see this is the two students there uh, and here we have this six uh, of pentacles so it might be that you are going to meet a, a person that's going to be like your spirit guide uh, we see it here and in the six of pentacles which is a person giving something that they have a lot of so maybe wisdom and money um, and it can be you also having this role and uh, maybe towards children for example um, so be a teacher and learn also from others all that you can learn. It will be very prosperous with the six of pentacles here connected to the lover's card. It will fix this issue here. Uh, you have this inner conflict, but uh, if you are letting yourself being guided by your inner wisdom um, and also kind of being forgiving both to yourself and others, uh, you will go through this with a lot of grace and a lot of prosperity will come out of it. Three of pentacles, six of pentacles. You might have a windfall of something that you really want to have in your life. It might be a total new beginning, uh, leaving kind of the old behind by finding yourself. Uh, last card is the magician. So it's for me now here, it's like the law of attraction. You're attracting something into your life. Uh, with the thoughts that you're thinking so uh, be very mindful of what you're thinking don't uh, don't um, limit limiting what you are thinking but be aware of what you're thinking because if you are aware of what you're thinking you can gradually and naturally just change things into a more positive um, a mantra that will give you more of what you want and less of what you don't want for example every time you say you are doing some craft and something goes wrong and you say oh i'm so stupid now i did this mistake again can't i ever learn and you just listen to yourself okay so i wasn't particularly supportive towards me in this situation okay interesting so you don't have to make a big fuss out, out of it just be you know awake to what it is that's happening inside of you next time you um, say you hurt yourself while you're doing your crafts um, you will start swearing and and then you will remember oh for i was i am aware that i also did this uh, yesterday uh, so uh, you, you might stop yourself there kind of naturally and so okay so it's maybe not a big deal uh, I can put a band-aid and continue. So, uh, and this is how you become living a more and more mindful life, uh, more and more in harmony, more and more closer to your source. Uh, also, uh, you will um, you will become more nice towards yourself because when you discover uh, the things you say or do towards yourself, uh, you will know instinctively when you are aware you will know instinctively that this is not harmonic and you will move towards the things that are more harmonic uh, so it's something interesting going to happen here um, for some of you uh, your old way of living or the old way of doing things will kind of die and there will be a little bit of inner battle within you but after that when you have kind of accepted that okay this is the reality uh, we can also remember the serenity prayer like you can fix the things that you really that you can fix that you have control over the things you don't have control over just accept it um, the things you cannot fix you don't drive yourself crazy thinking about how you can't fix it accept it uh, so uh, i will put the serenity prayer in the description box as well 
Um, so what I'm seeing here is for those of you that want it, there will be a, a chance of love, but it might start out as something else. It might be a work related uh, relationship or a situation where we are start out as friends, but it has great potential for whatever you want, uh, if you want it. Uh, it might also be like some kind of new endeavor, but it's something that makes you happy, okay? Happy as a child. It's something that you really want to do. It's not something you are forced to do to get money. It's something that you um, you do because it's fun, and then it might give you money, okay? So I'm thinking more and more people need to turn towards uh, professions that actually makes them happy instead of just going to work for uh, getting money because this is not going to suit our soul for so uh, much longer okay so I'm going to take a card for you here Oracle of the Angels uh, to see what's going on with Aries <laughs> yes you are a creator um, actually you have been creating a little bit uh, too much sometimes and of the wrong things maybe uh, getting more and more things that requires you to take a lot of responsibility, for example, things that you have created things that made a burden for you, for example, being making yourself um, like so valuable on the workplace that they can't go a day without you. Uh, so that makes you feel very important, but it also stresses you out. So I'm thinking you're going to do other types of creations in the future that's going to be more healthy. Um, Eleven. I am creator. Uh, we truly are the creators of our own destiny. Whatever you think about and give energy to becomes your reality. So become aware of every thought that crosses your mind and ask yourself, am I happy with this creation? This simple awareness will help you to consciously choose what, is, uh, what it is you create for yourself and your life. So it's like Marie Kondo, if you have um, heard about her. Um, she says, if you don't love a thing, don't keep it. Uh, if it doesn't make you happy when you hold it to your heart, don't keep it. So try to make choices in your life in this kind of way. I am the one and only creator of my life. I create through my thinking. I am creating every second of my life. When I am aware of my creator self, I make room only for thoughts of pure light. Uh, so it's kind of supporting uh, this, that you are this master creator, but you have a little bit uh, somewhat disturbing thoughts <laughs> that might create uh, things that you don't want. And so you just need to look at it and be aware of it. Um, can be small things. You have done the same reaction all your life. A person is flirting with you, uh, you ignore them uh, because it's not going to pan out to anything anyway. I'm just going to become disappointed. And that was a decision you, you took maybe when you were 10 <laughs> and you're still, you know, acting after this decision. So if you could uh, be aware of that and see, okay, so this person is flirting with me and I'm totally ignoring them because I'm not, uh, I don't have any hope. The star card is for hope. Um, so you can look at that just and maybe change your attitude and more fun things will happen. So with that flirt, your significant other, if you have a significant other or if it's your soulmate you haven't met yet, what, what are they thinking about you, feeling about you, hoping when it comes to you? Uh, don't be misled. When fear speaks, it's always wrong, unless being chased by wildebeest. <laughs> and when love speaks, it's always right and usually bouncy. Game on, the universe. Uh, so I think they have kind of uh, discovered that you live a little bit fear-based life. And um, I think they want to have connection with you, uh, but uh, it's a little bit intimidating. They don't know if they... Uh, if they will have their heads chopped off, maybe. Okay. Uh, so, and this is also when it comes to relationship where there's a lot with winning. Try to not have this uh, I'm right and you are wrong kind of thing. So this is your feelings towards your significant other. You know what to do. In all battles of the heart over the mind, go with your heart. 
because truly it's a lot easier for your mind to catch up with your heart than for your heart to catch up with your mind a whole lot. Not that I don't love your mind, the universe. So if you love someone and maybe you think that they are the devil, um, accept that you love the devil, okay? You can just accept it. You don't have to beat yourself up for it or um, try to change it. I need to stop loving this person. How do you stop love a person? Uh, they are probably from your soul group. You have known them from uh, 10,000 lifetimes <laughs> and now you are supposed to stop loving them. What's that all about? Maybe accept that love lives in your heart. Uh, either your loved one is near or not. Either they are the thing you want or not. Or they act like how you want a partner to act or not. Um, this love can of course be for family as well. Um, maybe you have a child you uh, wish they would perform in this and this way. But um, you love them for just the way they are. Uh, and this needs to go for yourself as well. Love yourself just the way you are and go with your heart. Um, we, we can put boundaries even if we love someone. It's, it's not hard. We can have an open heart and love a person and still be miles apart for them, from them if we need to. If we need to put some kind of boundary. Okay, so my dear Aries, I love your readings. They are often very heads-on. Um, uh, you just... Uh, need to be steered in the right direction and then you are rushing there like um, Aries so um, I uh, things goes easy for you uh, if you just know uh, how to do the things that's most healthy uh, for you in your life so uh, you have the energy to create whatever you want and now you just need to find polish uh, your creator skills so you don't create what you don't want uh, instead you create harmony for yourself and love and inner peace okay uh, so um, I want to welcome you back to my May reading that I will perform in the middle of April I might also uh, be able to push out some uh, pick a card reading I have had the influenza so I have been uh, prevented from doing that but if I um, if time and space are given I will uh, put out some pick a card reading so until then take really good care and bye bye